Hello viewers, uh, my name is Catherine Kaleli. I'm a clinical psychologist. I am coming to you right from St. Joseph of Arimathea, ACK Church in Nairobi Diocese, where I worship. I thank God for the opportunity given to me by my speaker to speak to us on ways to build resilience during COVID-19 pandemic. Karibuni sana. COVID-19 has affected our mental wellness greatly. Our normal daily routines have completely changed and have been disrupted. Viewers, we have been forced to make huge changes to our daily routines in an effort to stop the spread of this virus. The restrictions of movement, the new realities of working from home, loss of jobs, temporary unemployment, homeschooling for children, and lack of physical contact with other family members, friends, colleagues, take time to get used to. Adapting to lifestyle changes at this time, managing the fear of contracting the virus, and even worry about people close to us who are particularly vulnerable, the young ones, the elderly ones, and those with pre-existing conditions is very challenging to all of us. This disruption has caused shift of emotions. Quite often, we find ourselves feeling irritable. We have feelings of disconnection. We have stress and even anxiety. Developing coping skills and building resilience will help us to go through this crisis successively. Any change, even a positive change, is always stressful. So today, as we look at tips in building resilience, it is good to appreciate the fact that resilience is a process of adapting in times of adversity, in times of distress, in times of trauma or even tragedy. Resilience means knowing how to cope in spite of setbacks, in spite of barriers, in spite of limited resources. Largely, this has to do with our emotional strength. Being resilient includes learning from the past experiences and developing new coping strategies moving forward. When we become resilient, we are able to work through difficult circumstances like the one we are in right now. So let us look at a few things that we can do to build resilience during this pandemic. I'll look at six tips to building resilience. And the first one is building your connections. We all need support in life. Building good relations with close family members, with friends, with neighbors, and other important people, significant people in our lives, it's very important. Connections help us feel less lonely in times of need, like, times, like the times we are in now. This can be through creating of groups, platforms like Zoom, video chatting, phone calls, and even WhatsApp groups. Children and teens can also be assisted to build connections at this time. Remember, they are no longer going to school, and school environment is very important for their mental development. So allowing some digital connection of our children is very important to keep them connected with other children whom they have not seen for a while. Connecting them with your teachers, if you are able to, 
having, giving them a chance to talk to their teachers makes them feel secure and remain connected and therefore build resilience even during this time. The second tip of building resilience during this pandemic is focusing on controlling those things that are under your control. While we are not control over many things presently, for example, we have no control over the spread of coronavirus, we have no control over the recovery of our economy, we have no control over movements, we are not totally powerless. It is important to realize that we still have some things that are power under our control. So try to focus your mind on taking action over the aspects that are within your control. For example, you may have lost your job or income during this difficult time. You still have some control over how much energy you can put into searching for jobs online, sending out applications, networking with your contacts. Similarly, if you are worried about your health, amid the coronavirus pandemic. You can take action by regularly washing your hands, cleaning surfaces, and avoiding crowds, and even exercising. By focusing on what you can control, you will switch from worrying into active problem solving. The third tip is moving past shame. Certain times and hand times call for certain extraordinary measures. Reaching out for help, it's part of being resilient. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Sometimes life calls for getting off your throne and doing things differently. You may have, that, have been that big CEO that big manager, that big office. But such a time like this, it calls for getting off your throne. I was reading in a recent daily newspaper this week, and I saw two board of management teachers who lost their teaching jobs, sharing what they are doing currently after the loss of jobs. One of them has gone into fishing and is able to bring food on the table. Another one has turned into farming. So, extraordinary times like this calls for extraordinary measures. And therefore, moving past shame. There is nothing shameful in doing what they are doing and what you can think of doing as well. The fourth tip is focusing on the present. Uncertainty is often centered on worries about the future and all the bad things that we anticipate to happen. This leaves us feeling hopeless and depressed about the days ahead and also exaggerates the scope of the problems that we are facing. It can even leave us paralyzed and not able to take any action to overcome the problem. Instead of trying to predict what might happen, switch your attention to what is happening right now. By being fully connected to the present, you can interrupt those negative assumptions and catastrophic predictions running through your mind. You can learn to purposely focus your attention on the present through mindfulness. Each time you focus your attention back on the present, you are strengthening a new mental habit that can help you break free from uncertainty. The fifth tip in building resilience is counting your blessings. A time like this, you can be tempted just to look at the negative things, like I've said. Gratitude is a powerful well-being booster. 
try and count at least three things that you are grateful for in life every day when you wake up. It may be the smallest thing that you can imagine. If you cannot come up with new things every day, mention something good that you are happy about in your life. You can even maintain a small gratitude journal and when you look at it collectively, you'll have so many things to be happy about. So learn to count your blessings. The sixth and the last tip that I have in building resilience is managing your stresses and anxiety. Taking steps to reduce your overall stress and anxiety levels can help you interrupt the negative thoughts, can help you find inner calm and even better cope with uncertainty in your life during this pandemic. Get moving every day. Exercise is a natural and effective stress reliever and also and anxiety treatment. As you exercise, try and focus on how your body feels as you move. Pay attention to the sensations of your feet hitting the ground as you run, as you walk, as you dance. Pay also attention to the rhythm of your breathing, you know, the feeling of the sun or the wind on your skin. This will help you to reduce the step stress and anxiety levels. Make time for relaxation. Choose a relaxation technique such as deep breathing exercise, meditation or even yoga. And try to set aside some time every day for regular practice of this. Get plenty of sleep. Excessive worry and uncertainty can disturb your sleep. Just as a lack of quality sleep can actually fuel anxiety and stress. Improving your daytime habits and taking time to relax and unwind before bedtime can help you to sleep better at night. Eat a healthy diet. Eating healthy meals can help you maintain energy levels and prevent mood swings. Avoid sugary and processed foods and try to add some more omega-3 fats to give you an overall mood boost. Develop routines and commit to sticking to them. Allocate time for working and time for resting. Make time for doing things you enjoy. Allocate time to wake up and allo allocate time to go to bed. Allocate also time to keep yourself updated with the latest news from a trusted channel. Keep up to personal hygiene. As I conclude, I want to tell you to be kind to your mind. If there is any time that you have been kind to your mind, let it be now. Take good care of your mental wellness during this period. This will help you build resilience even as we go through this pandemic. And as I finish, Allow me to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, which says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Christians and viewers keep bouncing back. The key to resilience is faith in the Lord. May the Lord help us even as we go through this period. Thank you.